And we're looking at the Glock 30 and all the subsequent support gear for it. This is probably my favorite Glock. It's a compact 45. We'll move some of this stuff where it's not nearly as distracting. When Glock came out and first reached the American shores, They had one miscalculation in their gun. And that was that a lot of us that shot semi-automatics were 45 guys, not 9mm guys. The, uh... Eventually, they came and gained a following, and eventually, Glock brought 45s to the marketplace. Their full size 21, which carried 13 and 1, 14 rounds in the gun. And then they brought out this compact, which is actually more of a mid size gun, it carries 10 and 1. When the Glocks first hit the market, I remember telling a buddy of mine, probably in the 90s, great, when they make one in 45, I'll try it. Well, they brought one out in 45. I tried it. I liked it. I think this is my third Glock 30. Uh, 10 and 1 capacity. 10 in the magazine, 1 in the chamber. That's a lot of 45. The only modification done to this Gen 4, the square and compass back there. Other than that, the gun stock. I like the 45 and these semi-autos because of the pressures. These guns are not designed to run at the high pressures. They will run moderately high pressures, but what they allow is for me to shoot snake shot loads reliably, and they cycle reliably. In North Florida, if you're in and out of the woods a lot, and really anywhere around here in a rural area, you're probably going to run into a rattlesnake from time to time or moccasin. <laughs> The reason I like the 45 is because of its reputation for stopping power. That is one hell of a bullet right there. 230 grain golden saber. These are the ones designed with the thinner jackets to work well in the shorter barreled pistols. Other than that, it's pretty much plain and simple. The gun shoots. It shoots very accurately. It's been absolutely reliable. I haven't had a bobble out of it. It's had two or 3,000 rounds put through it. It carries easily in a variety of configurations. Um, I'm going to start with this one. This is the Talon Holster. They're located in Tallahassee. Great bunch of guys up there at the range. They make their own leather products. They're made in the USA. Can't say much else good about them. I mean, just great guys. They've got a fine range up there. Um, if you get up there, give them a try. The other one is an old favorite. I promised myself I would not buy any more of these since they were made in Mexico and no longer made in the USA. But the design on this Bianchi pistol pocket is so good. I've been carrying guns in these holsters 20 years. I still can't say enough good about them. They fit beautifully. They hold up well. Um... They're about 50 to 60 bucks, but if you can get 20 to 30 years worth out of a holster, that's money well spent. Then we get over to this one. This is Gould & Goolrich's 
version of the Yaki. Um, I could not find a Galco Yaki left-handed to fit some of these guns, so I found some Gould and Goldrich. One of the great things about being a Southpaw. This gun will hold my Glock 45s, both the 29 and the 30. I can use it on the range interchangeably. Um, when I'm going back and forth between these guns with the training sessions. And uh, they seem to do pretty well. The uh, Gen 4 guns, now they come with three magazines. That's a little Phobos paddle clip thing. You put that on your belt. Another thing I like about these guns and these magazines is that I can simply put a spare in my pocket. So that's a look at my favorite Glock. And I'll see y'all on the range. We'll talk to y'all later.